Shalom. I'm Eddie Chomney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you today to our study on the Hebraic roots of Christianity. This is our second program with Yardavidi. He's an Orthodox Jew who lives in Jerusalem, and we are here in Jerusalem doing this program, and he's going to help us today to further explain what the rabbis teach about the Ten Tribes. So, uh, our program today is, Who are the Ten Tribes? Part 2. And Yair, um, one of um, several books that you've written is this one. Yes, yeah, It's sure. entitled, Ephraim, the Gentile Children of Israel. And, and for clarification purposes, um, uh, we want uh, to uh, make sure that the people understand that you are an Orthodox Jew, which means that you do not believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. You do not believe uh, in the New Testament. You are uh, simply here to share with us what is the Orthodox Jewish view of what the rabbis teach about the tw Ten Tribes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, in our last program, we looked at who are the Ten Tribes, and um, we explain that the ten tribes are halakhically uh, non-Jewish, which means that according to the uh, official rabbinical understanding, they would not be regarded as Jews. And not being regarded as Jews, the rabbis wouldn't see that the ten tribes, as they are now, would not have an obligation to follow the Torah as the Jews do. We mentioned in the last program that there was an intermingling among the twelve tribes, that there were those from the ten tribes who did sojourn uh, with the house of Judah, and even were in some exiled with the house of Judah, but the majority of the ten tribes were exiled apart from the house of Judah. Then we also shared that there were those of the tribe uh, of Judah, and from the house of Judah, that was the southern kingdom, that they... Um, got exiled with the ten tribes, and they sojourned with the uh, ten tribes. However, the majority of the ten tribes are exiled and are separate from the house of Judah, and the majority of the house of Judah, the southern kingdom, are exiled separate from the northern kingdom. Is that all that correct from what we went over in our last program? Yes, that is correct. It's also confirmed by archaeological findings. Okay. Logical inscriptions, they found an inscription from Sennacherib. And the Bible tells us that Sennacherib besieged Jerusalem. You know the story of Jerusalem, the siege of Jerusalem, and, and, and King Ezekiah. And 180,000 of, of the of the host of Sennacherib were, were destroyed or killed by, by an angel. But it also tells us in, a, in the book of Chronicles how, how when Sennacherib came up, he, he seized all of the unfinished cities. And that's, uh, that's all it tells us. But he himself, in an inscription, says he took away as captives 200,000 people from the territory of Judah. And this is also confirmed by Midrash, that uh, Sennacherib took away a good portion of the, of the people of Judah. And they, in effect, joined the Ten Tribes and accounted as part of the Ten Tribes. But the majority of the Ten Tribes were, were taken to Babylon with, by King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, so I'll simplify it for you. There were two exiles. It was the Assyrian exile and the Babylonian exile. Okay. The Assyrian exile is when the ten, northern kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes, were taken into exile. And that includes everyone who was taken away from the, by the Assyrians, whether it was from Judah, whether it was from the northern tri tribes, they are a part of the ten tribes because the ten tribes were the major body as far as, far as the scripture is concerned of Israelites who were taken. Everyone in the, in the Assyrian exile is, is, is considered part of the ten tribes of Israel, in the legal terms, in the scriptural terms, in every, every whatsoever term you wish. Even though there were some from the house Even of Judah? Even though they were sent from Judah, some or from maybe or from whosoever. Okay. On the other hand, everyone who remained behind, joined themselves to Judah, to the, to the kingdom of Judah, are counted as part of the of the Jewish people, as part of, of even no matter what tribe they they re, they belong to. About a hundred more than hundred years later, these people too were also taken into exile by the Babylonians. But even though they were taken into exile to Babylon, they retained their Jewish identity. They retained the consciousness of who they were, and a portion of them returned under Israel and Nehemiah and later. And they rebuilt the kingdom of of, of Judah. So there's an intermingling of the tribes is what we're saying. Historically there was an intermingling of the tribes, 
but well, you can say there's a, but after the, there's a certain cut-off point. Any intermingling of the tribes, but up to a certain up to the cut-off point. After the cut-off point, whoever is found on either side of the fence belongs to whatever side he, he was found himself with. And then the other thing that we went over in last program is that uh, uh, Judaism, the rabbis teach that the uniting of the twelve tribes of Israel is a future event. It has not already happened. Yes, definitely. Okay, yes, so. Definitely. Um, there are those who try to make the claim that the twelve tribes have already been united and they were united in the days of the kings. And part of, of the explanation that they give on this is they refer to Second Chronicles. So I'm going to look at some scriptures from Second Chronicles and, and I want you to explain what is going on here from a, a Jewish point of view as the rabbis explain it. Because here in some of these verses in Chronicles it mentions some of the northern tribes that are interacting with the uh, with the house of Judah and so because this is some of the scriptures that um, that people give to try to say that the, the twelve tribes have already been united historically um, I, I want you to uh, give some explanation to this so what we're going to do first is we're going to look at second chronicles in chapter 15 um, and verse 9, where um, it mentions, And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. Okay, so we got that scripture that it, it mentions Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon along with gathering Judah and Benjamin. Now Judah and Benjamin would be the southern kingdom. Okay, so we got, we got that scripture. Um, then we got another scripture um, in uh, Second uh, Chronicles in chapter 30, and we're going to look at verse 1, and it says, And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, all Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem uh, to keep Passover. So there Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, of the southern kingdom is writing letters to Ephraim and Manasseh and a couple more verses we're going to look at because we'll, we'll uh, take all of these uh, together and you'll, you'll give an explanation here of what's going on Second Chronicles chapter 30 and uh, verses 9 through 11 it says for if you turn again unto the Lord your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that they led them captive so that they shall come again into this land, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if you return unto him. So the post passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun. So now Zebulun's mentioned. And they laughed them to scorn and mocked him. Nevertheless, diverse of Asher and Manasseh and, and Zebulun humbled themselves, and they came to Jerusalem. Now we're going to go to Second Chronicles, chapter 34, uh, verse 6 and verse 9. And it says, And so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali. So there it mentions Naphtali. And then the last verse, Second Chronicles, chapter 34, and verse 9. And when they came to Hilkiah the high priest, they delivered money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites that kept the doors, he gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and all the remnant of Israel, Manasseh and Ephraim, all the remnant of Israel, and of all Judah and Benjamin, and they returned to Jerusalem. So when we looked at these verses, it mentioned Simeon, it mentioned Naphtali, it mentioned Asher, it mentioned Ephraim and Manasseh, and they're asked to come to Jerusalem, along with Benjamin and Judah. So doesn't that prove that all the twelve tribes are, are united there and they're together and um, and that we already have the, the uniting of the twelve tribes and they're, they're all Jews? Uh, no, it doesn't. We have to look at each and every verse that you quoted and see its context. All see right. what, it, what, what exactly is being spoken of. So briefly describe that then. Uh, so uh, you, you started with King Asa and you went on to King Hezekiah, so it's quite a bit of, a, of a time. Uh, chronologically, quite a bit of territory. There was, there were, 
people from the, the north, as we said, the Lost Ten Tribes were had set up their own kingdom of Israel under Jeroboam ben Nabat. And it says that the Jeroboam ben Nabat, the first king of the independent um, entity of Israel, of the ten tribes, he was not from the house of David, he was from the, uh, the tribe of uh, Ephraim. And he himself, he set up uh, golden calves in Bethel and in Dan, he told the people to worship them and not to go up to Jerusalem. This may not have been uh, exactly idolatry in the strict sense of the word, but it had idolatrous implications, it was against the will of the Almighty, and it led, it quickly degenerated into a right, uh, outright paganism, a worship of uh, other gods and so on. But not all of the Israelites were pleased with it. For instance, we find you know, in the first book of Chronicles that how, the, the, he also, how Jeroboam also appointed uh, non-Levites to the priestly positions to, to be officiates of this new religion that he was founding. And the, the Levites who had previously been the, the officials of the guardians of the, of the worship of the true God of Israel, they all left the northern kingdom and went to the south and they rejoined themselves to Judah. And also it says that a lot of people from all of the, tri all of the, all of the Israelites were displeased, disaffected with his, with his revolutionary innovations. They still uh, retained their loyalty to the Almighty God of Israel and to the, truth, uh, to, the, to the law of Israel. They returned and they went to the south and attached themselves to Judah. Nevertheless, uh, we're speaking of a, a minority. The majority of the population remained where they were as they were. That's the key. You're talking about there was an intermingling, but those of the ten tribes who uh, was with Judah was a minority. Yes. Okay, continue. So if we, if we can go to the first verse, I'd, uh, I'd like to, uh, to, to take these points up verse by verse because there's a few uh, points that are important. Okay, so... First of all, King Asa. You mentioned King Asa. King Asa was, that is a classical case. King Asa was the king of Judah and the Jew, also the Jews in Judah were also not always perfect, as good as they would be. They also, like the Northern Kingdom, sometimes slipped into idolatrous patrices. Now the same way as the peoples all around them. And then on one, they come, when a righteous king would come along and straighten things out. Asa was one of these, and when he introduced his reforms, people from the north who sympathised with, with, the, with, the, with, with what Asa was doing, joined him. So that's quite simple. Okay, yeah. so we're, look, we're talking now about Second uh, Chronicles chapter 15, and specifically verse 9, where under King Asa, it talks about Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon. I'll continue. Uh, there's another point in what, in what interests you concerning Simeon. Simeon, in effect, no, geographically, Simeon was in the south. Look at the map on the distribute the, the, the tribes of Israel. You see Simeon is in the south. Also, we find Simeon associated with Judah when they, when, uh, they came into the land under Joshua. It says that Judah said to his brother Simeon, come up with me, help me conquer the land, I'll go up with you and we'll uh, make a partnership. And in effect, it also gives the distribution of the, of the cities and the portions of Simeon. Uh, most, many, much of them uh, seem to be encompassed by the tribe of Judah. So, and it has always been assumed that Simeon was in effect part of Judah, because uh, geographically he was in the south, whereas the northern tribes, the ten tribes under Jeroboam were in the north. But uh, there are uh, portions of the, of the Bible where it mentions ten tribes and implies in, 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 the very, in one of these verses, the very verse that you quoted, it talks about Simeon as a being part of the Northern Kingdom. The very of uh, uh, the 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 of uh, jo Josiah, King Josiah went up and did a reform throughout all the Northern Kingdom. Throughout the part, he also mentions himself doing a reform in Simeon. In this verse that you quoted just now, that indicates that Simeon had been part of the ten tribes. And also we do we have found archaeological findings in the Northern Sinai of an area that belonged to Simeon. And there they have uh, references to the god of Samaria. And also they have a uh, found pottery and uh, the, the script that they use are, is similar to that associated with the northern area of Israel, the northern ten tribes rather than the south. So somehow, they, even though Simon geographically was in the south, he was uh, politically associated with the north and he was taken into exile along with the northern ten tribes. He was part of the ten tribes and also Midrashim confirmed this. And yet there were those from Simeon who was... Um uh, 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 because Simeon had been physically close and interlocked with Judah, it's obviously that the poor some of Simeon remained with Judah. And the same applies to, to Ephraim and Manasseh. But as Nachmanides, who we quoted in the last program, 
Nagmanis in the Book of, of uh, Redemption emphasizes this, there were only uh, a minority of the tribes that were to be associated with Judah because their, most of their fellow tribesmen had gone into exile and they were not uh, in, there in sufficient numbers to be able to... Uh, to uh, Constitute uh, a, uh, their own tribe or yeah, identity. Yeah, it, exactly. Okay, so what about uh, Second Chronicles chapter 30? You talked about now King Asa and the circumstances there with Simeon. Uh, what about uh, with King Hezekiah so King in Hez chapter 30? Uh, Hold on a second. Okay. Um, in verse 1, it talks about all Israel and Judah to Ephraim and Manasseh. And then, in verse 10, it talks about Zebulun. In verse 11, Asher. In verse 18, Zebulun. And this is all in the time of Hezekiah here. So explain that what's going on here. So first of all, the exile by the Assyrians was in stages. The Bible tells us about this. Also, uh, Assyrian inscriptions say the same, confirm what the Bible says. As if the Bible does not need their confirmation. If you want, it's good to know. The, then the one Chronicles says, tells us how the, the, the tribes east of the Jordan, Harp and Asher, Gad and Reuben, were taken away by Tiglath Pileser and Pug, mm -hmm. by the Assyrian monarchs. And they were taken away to Har Harbor, the river of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes and Hara. And then another inscription tells us that, uh, sorry, another verse. And the kings tells us how the northern uh, cities of the northern Galilee, uh, Ben Macha, Ion, Naphtali, and all that area of war was also taken into exile. For both these events, we have a Syrian inscription saying the same. How the Syrians said they conquered the area and they took the people's concern into exile. Mm -hmm. And that is what the Bible tells us. Then there was another stage. Actually, there were more stages. Uh, these were the major stages. There were sub-stages after that. There were three main stages. The, main, the first stage, we can say, the east of the Jordan, then the northern Galilee. The second stage was Samaria. Samaria was like a rump state. A minority who remained in the region of present-day Samaria. And they were the last ones to be taken away. When Hezekiah became king, the first two stages had been completed. The, eastern, the tribes east of the Jordan had been taken away. The tribes of northern Galilee had been taken away. There remained only Samaria in his first year. It says further down, in, I think in the third, or the fourth year, the third year of Hezekiah, there began the siege of Samaria. And it took three to four years, uh, there's different verses, three to four years for it to be completed. In other words, this letter that Ezekiel sent out to the other tribes, to the northern, to the tribes of, of, of Samaria, if one in Asher was in his first year to run, whilst there were still Israelites in Samaria. Only three years later did the Syrians besiege Samaria. It's, uh, this is what the Bible itself says. It, um, we'll see it further on. We are told of how, um, of how the Assyrians besieged Samaria and after three years they took it and they took away uh, all of the people of Samaria to areas with, in the Assyrian Empire where their, where, their, where their brothers had already been taken unto. Okay, so that's uh, Hezekiah. Now what about Second Chronicles in chapter 34 verse uh, 6 and verse 9 and this is under the reign of King Josiah and here it talks about Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon to Naphtali. And then in verse 9, it speaks about and all the remnant of Israel. So what's going on here with King Josiah when it mentions... Okay, so I'll get back. I'll come to King Josiah. Okay. Just would like to go back a little bit to Hezekiah. Okay, we we'll also read out a verse from Hezekiah. Where Hezekiah went to the north, conquered the northern area. And it says he broke down all of the idols he found. He came around. He went to the Simeon. He went to... Um, Went to the, it says, and, um, where is it? Ezekiel came into uh, to the uh, and to the northern kingdom, uh, which that we read out. Well, you can just make reference to it here for us, just to save a little bit of time. Okay, so the the, uh, the Hebrew. This is where the Hebrew translation is different from the English translation. It says that he broke that he went into the cities, and he uh, and he and he went through them with metals. It's as translated as Matox. Uh -huh. In uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew says, Bechabotehem. He went into the cities in their ruins. Bechabotehem means ruin, ruination in, in Hebrew. In other words, he went into, he went into the, see, the Israelite cities which were ruined. And he broke down the idols that he found. 
who sort of said he kills the priests, but these priests, are, as far as we know, were Samaritan priests or non-Jewish priests, non-Israelite priests, who were serving in the area. Uh, and uh, so in effect, this, uh, the verses from Ezekiel that some people would like to quote are saying that the lost ten tribes were not exiled, in effect, uh, prove the opposite. In the Hebrew version, original says, Baha'u'llah, that the cities were ruined. And that, these are the cities that uh, Ezekiel took over and purified. Okay, so what about then under King uh, Josiah? So, uh, so King Where here it mentions in verse 6, Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, and Naphtali. And in verse 9 it mentions in all uh, the remnant of Israel. What's, okay. what's going on here in the so, days of King Josiah? King Josiah is a different case. There are two aspects to, to Josiah. There's the aspect of um, that uh, the Nachmandi has mentioned that there were people from the tri tribes, from the ten tribes who attached themselves to Judah. There's one uh, that is the main, uh, that is a, a sufficient, a sufficient answer. And historically, we also know that like King Josiah, Josiah, he sent uh, Jeremiah to the tribes to bring them back, according to Jewish uh, traditions, according to the Talmud. And they, he went, and Josiah went unto them and asked them to come back, and most of them did not want to. A small portion returned, and these, according to archaeologists, were Scythians. In the reign of King Josiah, there were Scythian settlements in Israel, well, not only in the northern territory of Israel, but also in Judah. When the areas of Judah had conquered from the Philistines, there would be one Jewish, Judean settlements and Scythian settlements side by side, showing that they cooperated with each other. Afterwards, King Josiah was killed. He was actually killed again fighting against the Egyptians on behalf of the Scythians. When he died, according to the Jewish tradition, as quoted by Nachmanides, the those members of the lost ten tribes were the small, the small. Uh, Contingents from the ten tribes who come back and try to reestablish themselves return to their places of exile. So, too, archaeologically, we no longer, after his reign, we no longer find evidence of Scythian settlements in Israel. It finished with him. Uh, we also, what, what we did do, for incidentally, we according, according, even according to Roman tradition, the Romans wrote that uh, Beth Town used to be known as Scythopolis because that was the capital of the Scythians when they ruled over the Middle East. Beth Town, Israelite Beth Town. They found a steel, an inscription, in in Bethjan, acknowledging the super, sovereignty of jo King Josiah of Judah of that area, when it was supposed to be the Scythian capital of the region. This, so this is another proof that the, there was an interlocking between uh, or an identification between the twenty Scythians and King, as subjects of King Josiah, and these Scythians or Scythian peoples were actually Israelites. Part of this also became identified with the Scythians. So this explains the um, uh, Josiah referring to Ephraim and Manasseh, which were at that time in his kingdom. All right. So um, in Second Chronicles, it, it's not from the information that we're given in these times and in the, the, the various kings that is not showing us that the twelve tribes were united in those days. It just show, it just shows that that there was an intermingling. Um, amongst them, but ultimately there was the exile of the ten tribes and also the exile of the house of Judah that were separate exiles. One, the Assyrian exile by the ten tribes, the other, the Babylonian exile by the house of Judah. And there were some of those of the house of Judah that got taken with the Assyrians, and then there were some that this, that were left behind from the Assyrians that were sojourning with Judah and then they got taken to Babylon. So that's what's going on here. Um, it's not describing that there was a unification of the twelve tribes um, uh, in the days of the kings, but there there was the exile and ultimately the real unification of the twelve tribes of Israel then is a future event. Well, that, is, all, is that accurate? All right, so um, Nachmanides, in his book, The Book of Redemption, I want to summarize this as we're closing up the program, um, he wrote about this issue, explaining the exact things uh, that, that you're uh, talking about, and the points that he made is that in Judah is all the tribes of Israel, but Judah, the house of Judah, the southern kingdom, is dominated by Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and that there was a minority of those tribes uh, from the ten tribes who sojourned with Judah, but they themselves who were sojourning with, with Judah was not enough to
to be designated as their own tribal identity. And there were a minority of Jews that were sojourning with the ten tribes. And um, um, they lost their Jewish identity in sojourning with the, the ten tribes. And you call them, what, uh, uh, crypt? Uh, captive Jews. Captive Jews. You call them captive Jews. After, after our Babylon, do not say Babylon. Okay, and so um, um, you really have to study the Bible and, 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 and see what's going on here and knowing a little bit of the history of what's going on to uh, really have a solid understanding of this issue. You just can't pull scriptures out here and say, oh, look, in the days of the kings, uh, you had Ephraim and Manasseh here along with Judas, and that means that the twelve tribes of Israel are united. Um, we, we need to be better uh, Bible students um, to know what's uh, going on here. And so um, I wanted you to come and uh, share with our audience today, Yair, um, how are these things seen from a Jewish point of view. So that's got to conclude our program for today. Now remember always these words from 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He who says he abides in him, he who says he's a believer in Yeshua as Messiah, ought himself to walk, that means to live our lives, even as he walked. Now how did he walk and live his life? He followed the Torah of his Father. Even so, he commanded in John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.